Welcome students. We know that all over the world there is an spread of disease known as coronavirus. Coronavirus is taking a lot of life all over the world. So this virus is spreading all over the world from one person to another person. That means what? That we it is reproducing in some way that it can be transferred from one human being to the another human being. So from that note, we can start today the chapter reproduction in the organisms. Okay, so I am writing reproduction. Reproduction in organisms. So reproduction in organisms you will be seeing there are different modes of reproduction in different types of organisms. So first of all we have to know what is the lifespan. So lifespan is the time gap between the birth and the death. So from birth to the death the time period is known as lifespan. The lifespan may vary from few days to few weeks to few hundred years. For butterfly, it is near about few weeks, one or two weeks. And for a banyan tree, it is near about 400 to 500 years old. So the lifespan varies in different organisms in different time period. But you can say there is no actual time span of uh, a microorganisms or single cell organisms. Why? Because there is no actual death of the microorganisms. They actually multiply by divisions and they become, they doesn't death, they actually transfers into two organisms. Suppose a amoeba, it is an amoeba, it becomes mature and it will be divided into two smaller amoeba. So, it will not die actually. In normal cases, it will divide into uh, two or different organisms. But in higher organisms, there is a senescence period in the organisms. They will either um, die in their time period. Okay, so it is already there in their body. They after some time, the degradation of their body part starts. So, after some time, it will dead. Okay, so. So reproduction is needed to overcome this problem. To uh, um, comprise all these things, the organisms reproduce their same thing um, repeatedly so that they can increase the number of individual of that group. So reproduction might be uh, sexual and sexual. So it may be asexual or sexual. Asexual means absence of sex organs. So asexual means in the absence of sex organs, how do organisms reproduce is called asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction can be seen in different organisms such as in amoeba. they will do binary fissions binary fissions so this is called binary fissions this is a type of asexual reproduction in case of yeast some buddings will be created over here and after some time that organisms will be another yeast. So this is amoeba, this is yeast. So that is binary fission, this is the budding. Okay, so these are the examples of asexual reproduction. There are some fragmentations also. Some organisms are there if it will be dividing and regenerating into new ones. Suppose this is, it happens mainly in algae. So 
Suppose these are the algae, it gets fragmented. Somewhere it becomes fragmented over here and it will become two separate individual. So these are two separate individual and these are a single individual. Okay, so this one divided into two fragmentation. So by these are the ways of asexual reproduction. So asexual after that it will be sexual reproduction. Sexual. Sexual reproduction means there should be some definite sex organs. There should be some definite sex organs for having sexual reproduction. So what will be that? The first one will be the formation of gametes. formation of gametes the first one is that formation of gametes so the gametes will be produced and the uh, new organisms will be produced okay so formation of the gametes the gametes are produced in different organisms in different ways okay some are homothelic or heterothelic or monoecious or heteroecious okay so monoecious means what organisms carry both male and female sex organs are called monoecious and dioecious means organisms are bisexual it might contain male part or it might contain a female part okay so in human beings we have seen that the male reproductive cell is sperm and female reproductive sperm uh, 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 cell is ovum okay so the formation of gametes are different types. There are isogametes. Isogametes means you cannot distinguish which is male and which is female. Okay, so both the gametes are same. They will form a 2N. Okay, so this is N, this is N, it is isogametes. So that means these are similar in structure and they will form a zygote of two way and heterogametes. Heterogametes, suppose a human sperm. Human sperm and ovum. So these are heterogametes. They look different. Okay. Acha. Another thing, ovum are mainly bigger in size than the sperms. Why? Because ovum are non-motile and they actually contain all the nutritions for the growing of that zygote or embryo and they are mainly motile they goes they goes and fertilize the ovum and then the zygote formation takes place so we have learned the isogametes and heterogametes if they look like similar those are called isogametes and if they look different those are called heterogametes Then fertilization. It may be internal or external.
so it may be internal or external external is seen suppose in amoeba uh, sorry uh, amphibians where the male and uh, female frog lays egg outside their body and then the male frog comes and spread their sperms over those eggs and those eggs get fertilized so these are called the external fertilization where the fertilization takes place outside the body and in case of suppose human beings fertilization takes place inside the body that is called internal fertilization so when the fertilization takes place inside the body is called internal fertilization and when the fertilization takes place outside the body it is called external fertilization okay so after fertilization what will be produced it will be producing two in zygote so it may be plants or it may be animals wherever it may be the uh, when their fusion of male and female gamete takes place, it will be producing two N zygotes. Yes. Always remember gametes, gametes are N and zygotes are two N. Okay, so gametes are always haploid and zygotes are always deployed okay after what will happen after the formation of zygotes the zygotes will be implanted in a definite area or it will start to grow and it will be forming the embryos it may be in uh, animals or it may be in plants both where the formation of embryos takes place and embryos are the multiplied forms of zygote okay so embryos are always 2n so the gametes are only n and the zygotes are always 2n and embryos are also 2n so primitive organisms are mainly haploid in nature and uh, the advanced group of organisms are mainly diploid groups of organisms why because the life for a life cycle to maintain so the primitive organisms can maintain this type of diploid structure so they maintain the haplontic life cycle okay where they have in such as monera okay algae some algae are there okay bryophytes all those have the haplontic life cycles or haploid main plant body and in higher organisms such as angiosperms, gymnosperms and including humans also we are all diploid organisms okay we have double pairs of organisms in human it is 2n means 46 chromosomes in humans humans 2n means 46 chromosomes so these are all about the uh, reproduction in organisms so these are the basic structures how we will be going through to the reproduction in organisms all in next chapter so we will be learning about the reproduction in plants and reproduction in animals and how they are different from each other thank you stay at home and be safe thank you